Hey, I'm John Cannell. Today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making buttery crescent rolls. So let's get started. First off, we're gonna warm one third of a cup of water to 110 to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour that into the bowl of your stand mixer and mix with one teaspoon of granulated sugar. These yeasts need a happy place to wake up. So I'm gonna toss them in, give them a little mix, and set this aside until they're nice and foamy. It should be like five minutes. While that warms up, we're gonna measure out two thirds of a cup of whole milk and warm it up too. You'll also wanna make sure you have half a cup or 113 grams of room temperature butter. So if you didn't warm it up, pop it into the microwave for like five second increments. Four teaspoons of sugar now, the two thirds of a cup of warmed milk, and half a cup of room temperature butter. If you're wondering, I didn't melt the butter because the room temperature butter gives this very rich and wet dough a little bit of body. So it helps hold it together at the beginning. To this mixture, we're also gonna add two eggs. Room temperature, please. Popping this onto my scale and I'm gonna add 240 grams or two cups of flour. We're adding the flour in stages, which is the key to making a silky and rich dough. Now I'm gonna plop this onto my stand mixer with a paddle attachment. No dough hook today. Pop your paddle attachment on and we're gonna mix this up until it's well combined. While that mixes, I'm measuring out an additional two cups of flour, 240 grams. Come take a look at this. The butter worked in right away and we already have a pretty silky dough but it's really like pancake batter at this moment. It's so loose. No structure, not enough flour. Sprinkling in my one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. The kosher salt just refers to the grain size. If you use fine grain salt, use a little bit less. We've got one final mix. Popped our dough hook on. Now we're gonna add the remaining flour half a cup at a time. This will be mixing for a long time. <laughs> so add the flour in, let it mix, and then you're gonna let it mix for 15 minutes. It's a long time and aren't you glad you're not doing it by hand? The dough should look a certain way. It'll form a ball, pull away from the edge. If that doesn't happen, we're gonna add a little bit more flour. But let's take a look in 15. Magic of editing. It's been just about 15 minutes and it's not pulling away as much as I'd like. I'm gonna add the remaining one half cup of flour. Come take a look and see what it looks like. It's just kind of stuck on the bowl a bit. So that little bit of flour made all the difference. It's totally a big dough ball right now. Just gonna mix it up for a few minutes so that flour gets totally incorporated. Yeah, that looks great. You can see how it's clearing the side completely. I added a little bit of oil to a large bowl, then pop this in and let it rise. Very sticky dough, but as you know, the rule of thumb is the stickier the dough, the more delicious the end result. Plop that dough out onto your oiled bowl. Just like that. We're gonna cover this dough up place it into a nice cozy place and let it rise until it's doubled in size, which is about 45 minutes. See you soon. Our dough is risen. Look at that, it's amazing. I love seeing it puff up. However, it's a little too puffed. So we're gonna kind of tap it down a bit, a little bit of gentle, my kids call this a tap. <laughs> like I tapped him. It's like, right, that's called a hit. Gently punching my dough down, I'm gonna divide this into two big pieces. We're gonna make two 12 inch circles of dough. Let's lightly flour our work surface. Now I'm gonna roll this out into a 12 inch circle. This is where a pastry mat comes in handy because it tells you the exact diameters to work to, but otherwise just eyeball it or get a ruler. Okay, we're just about there. Once you have a 12 inch circle, you're gonna cut this into 12 pieces. I like to use a pizza cutter, but you can use a knife, a bench scraper, whatever you like. So 12 is four times three. So if I make quarters like that, and then I cut each of these quarters into thirds like that, I'll have 12 pieces. Look at that math problem. I could have assigned that to my students when I was teaching. Baking has so many amazing applications for math and science. There should be ovens in classrooms. Let me know if you agree in the comments. <gasps> Beautiful, okay. Now for the extra fun part, we're gonna roll our crescents. All you have to do is grab the edge of your little piece of pizza and roll it up, just like that. 
and it looks perfect. It's so easy. Plop each of your crescents onto a baking sheet. Give them some space to rise because there's one final rise. One tray is done. I'll do the others off camera, but these guys are going to get loosely covered and go in for one more rise of 30 minutes. See you in a minute. After a half hour in a warm, cozy place, my crescent rolls are ready to go into the oven, 400 degrees for 10 to 12 minutes until golden brown. Then one final step. After about 10 minutes, these are golden brown and ready for their final step, brushing with melted butter. Oh yes, added richness at its best and they look glossy and beautiful. It's like a buttery bread pillow. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and I'll see you in the next video. If you like this recipe, check out my bread playlist.